Okay, okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. Up and running, Monday morning, 8 o'clock. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Chats look normal. For me, it doesn't. The, the font has changed, which is okay. The font face has changed, which is okay. But it's gone gray. Instead of black, it's gray. And I am really actually having trouble reading this. Good morning, good morning. Okay. Not to exaggerate, I'm not having trouble, but it's much more difficult. Crow friend, more than one. More than one out there. They're having a crow territory turf war or something out there. But did you catch that the other day with a little dog, the little yapper, 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 who totally, absolutely shut up when the crow was near? And I guess I can understand why the crow is probably twice his size. Okay, moving along. I did more work after you guys left the other day, and uh, we're moving along here. We are moving along. Let me get this sorted out. I don't know if it's my browser settings. I don't want to set the font face for every single website I visit. It's this particular chat, you know. Whatever, I'll dig around a bit more later, but the right now I was just in the font settings there with the gear icon, and it didn't seem to show anything like that, so. Let's get this. I had the camera all moved around yesterday, filming for finally the next YouTube video, dare I speak it. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. I was shooting some B-roll for the next video. It won't be tomorrow, that's for sure, it won't be tomorrow, but it's coming up closer, closer, closer. Stoning an extension, well, just what I need, okay. Paper, uh, paper is not out, nor is there any need for paper out. There are no yellow dots on the freezer upstairs this morning. I stumbled up there at about 5.30 and found no dots. Actually, there were some dots there from Ayumi-san, but uh, she, they're just left over from last week. But, uh, she won't be uh, coming for a while. So. Okay, uh, you heard me talking with someone there just for a minute when we left. Uh, we're going to have a little guest, I know, uh, uh, a, a guest today. I know, uh, Kirsten, our staff member from Australia, is here, and it's a good, good uh, choice for her to come today because I need some help. Today's show and tell is too big for me to handle sitting here by myself, so I asked her. She's doing her work upstairs on the flea market, and she's going to come back down around show and tell time, or a little bit before. And she is going to uh, she's going to help me with what we have to show this morning. Neat stuff. Neat stuff. Okay, let's do some work. Let's do some work here. We're on the very last pine needles. We've come around. If there's uh, new people here, we can zoom just for one second here and show you what's going on. There's, as always, new people. We are carving a piece of wood for making woodblock prints. This is the piece of wood itself. Oops, not that. Not that, not that, here we are. This is the image in black and white of what's going on here. The block I'm carving is to print black lines and it will look, when I'm finished, something like this. The, the print will look something like this. There will be color blocks, that's gonna come later. It's full of pine needles, and I've been working my way all around, all around, all around, and I'm in the last group here now, which is this, uh, this last group here. Let's have a go. Good morning to all the regular crowd. A live broadcast of a pre-recorded video. Shall I hold up today's newspaper? <laughs> today's newspaper, yeah, right. We 
we are, I think, going to have a fairly quiet time over the next few days, speaking of outside, the construction work that's happening out there. Uh, you know, there was some deconstruction happening. The shop next door is changing from a kimono shop into a restaurant. And there is going to be a ton of noise over the next couple of months while that happens. But the next few days should be quiet. And it's because when I spoke to the guy who was doing the deconstruction, he came last week to explain what was going to be going on and apologize for the noise. And he told me that they had booked him from the time period October 1st to October 12th. That was the scheduled window for deconstruction, or whatever it's called, when you're taking away stuff. So I, I suppose that means, because they had been given that window October 1st to 12th, then the construction people probably will come in and start October 13th. But it turned out that deconstruction took them only two days. They were finished at the end of the second day, October the 2nd. So I don't know if the new construction people are able to move up their schedule or if that's it, it's, it's fixed and they won't be here till October 13th. It's quite possible. So we may have a nice peaceful, well, a normal time for the next week or so. And then once it starts, it'll start, and there will be all kinds of noise, of course, you know. It's a quiet Monday morning here outside in Azaksa. Uh, we've just come off a weekend. It wasn't a long weekend. It was a normal weekend this time. But uh, but the joint was jumping. Hontani was jumping. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Japan news, whatever, but uh, as part of the attempt, the government is making these attempts to recover, I don't know, to fix the economy from, from the virus shock. There's a travel campaign going on here in Japan where the government pays, like, I think around half or so of year of year your travel and stuff, and they've extended it to restaurants, and they've extended it to Tokyo. When it was first announced, and when it was up and running a while ago, it didn't include Tokyo, and it does now. So last weekend was the first weekend in this new regime, where basically you go out and get drunk, do whatever you want, and the government's gonna pay half of it for you. <laughs> so the joint was jumping, it was jumping. 
there were lines. I went out for a walk in the middle of the afternoon yesterday, and in the middle of Sunday afternoon, there's just lineups at all the bars and, and the hoppy dodi, the, the place that puts the seats outside and stuff. And, uh, and it doesn't affect our business at all. Nothing. We still we still stay closed. Even there's nothing nothing in this for us. But uh, but it was busy, busy, busy. So they're all recovering now. You know. Check what's going on over on this side here. Good morning, Warren. Good everybody. New faces here, we. How often do you have to sharpen? I'm going to be sharpening in a couple of minutes. I'm going to be sharpening in a minute now because it's starting to feel a little spongy. So give me a second here and then we will sharpen. I guess now that we've talked about it, let's do it, whatever. Actually, the tiny tip is gone too. Let's see. Of the two stones here, we've got a 400 and a 1,000, and uh, we don't need to go to the 400. That would be too, too strong for what we need this morning. When we actually break the knife, as in crack, then we need the strong stone, but uh, this is not a repair. This is just a touch up, put the edge back on. You can get a reflection here and see it. There's our blade. Uh, the other day, Taran San, Taran KC, Taran KC was uh, in the in the stream here. I don't think he's in this morning because he's got to go to work. He works as an English teacher still during the days. And he was here the other day because it was Saturday, his off day. But uh, I don't suppose he's here today. But if he were here now, he'd be looking at this and just, he'd be, not face palming because he knows me, but he would be, Dave, why don't you do it properly, you know? I do it the way that I just figured out for myself years ago. This is not the official way to sharpen these blades. You know? If you've seen the Ito-san video, the epilogue video, you'll have seen Ito-san sharpening, and he works on a side-to-side, side-to-side basis. You know? If I were starting all over again, I'd try that too, but 
at this stage now at my age, I'm not going to try and learn the whole thing all over again. So somebody's saying time to flip it over, John, there. I should have actually started with the 400 there. <laughs> I said the tiny tip was broken off, and I should have perhaps done a few strokes with the 400 first instead of trying to do it with the 1,000. People are watching that closely, are they? <laughs> I can't get away with anything. God, I cannot get away with anything here. <laughs> Why am I doing this? And then these streams are being like, someone's archiving these somewhere on YouTube, you know? So, so every time I do something, it's not quite so perfectly done. It still gets archived and stored, you know? So as John is pointing out, I don't normally stay on the 1000 that long. And actually it still isn't quite as what it should be here, but uh, whatever. Something's funny with the world when you've got some, uh, some dude who is a, a photographer, professional photographer in Knoxville, Tennessee, and he can critique the way some ukiyo-e carver is sharpening his tools. I mean, what's going on with the world today, you know? <laughs> and then let's think about the other way. John, show me some of your pictures of your houses. Let me have a look at this, if I can see some angles here. and. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm laughing. You know, it's funny. It's it's funny. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not complaining. I'm laughing here. You know. So. <laughs> soka, soka, soka. Yeah, the ones had. They don't have the chat. Soka. So as long as I keep quiet, we're okay. Is that the idea? It's the ones where I admit something uh, in audio. <laughs> The fans are getting noisy. You mean, mean my computer fans or, or the people out there? How beautiful do I find this design? I think it looks attractive. Well, we, uh, like I said, we chose it, of course. And it's not just me, actually. This year's, this, this series for next year, it was my conception. It's an idea I've had a seed that's been buried for a long time. And a month or two months ago, when it became time to actually get going on this, 
I put the idea out to the staff. Here's what we want to do. We want to do a set of nature prints, and I think there's enough Cordyusite stuff. We can do a full set just from Cordyusite. And I went to, you know, a Google image search and stuff and just slapped together, literally just slapped together a dozen or so of them as a, as a, as a not proof of concept, as a show of the concept. And then I asked some of the staff members, this was Rei-chan, Ishikawa-san, uh, who else was involved, I can't remember. And I asked them, okay, get out there, get out into the world and, and do your Googling stuff. And you find enough images from Koryu's side that make a nice balanced set of 12. And they went at it. And uh, this was one that I myself hadn't included in my set. This was one that I think Rei-chan chose. And then we worked on it. We sat together, Rei-chan, uh, Ichikawa-san, myself, Chon-san joined. And we sat there with dozens and dozens of images. We each made our choice. I like these, I like these, I like these. And then together as a group, we built a balanced set. It's got a mix. It's going to be six of the prints of the 12 are going to be birds and flowers. And six, another six are going to be a Kodiu-sized creatures. There will be a dragon. There will be a monkey. There will be even, there will be a cat, dare I say it. There will be another cat coming up. And we chose prints that we thought would make a balanced set, that we liked, that we thought would be interesting to consumers, and that uh, would be doable. Some of the prints in, uh, in the package were just too, too complex. Not complex that we couldn't do them technically, but in order to put them into a subscription series, it's got to be doable at a, at a reasonable cost level. Is that the Oshibori guy? I didn't see the truck when it came by. I didn't have my head up. Yeah, it's the Oshibori pair, the, the pair of young guys. So. And they will be busy today. They will have a lot to do because uh, as after the weekend, of course. You know, so. Any monkeys in the series? There will be a monkey in the series. There will be actually a... I think there's a dog in this series. I, 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 they threw one at me that I rejected. It was an awful looking Cordyside dog. And I said, just no, no, and no again. But, uh, so I'm not sure about the dog, but there will be a cat, and it is unmistakably an ukiyo-e cat. An unmistakable cat, you'll see. Oh, there's another message that's been held for bad language here. I think I can allow it. I can see why it was held, but I think it's allowable here. Let's see. Pop. This is the message from Mitch T.Y. It was held for investigation. An unmistakable ukiyo -e cat. I didn't mistain, uh, mean, mean unmistakable ukiyo -e, I meant it's an unmistakable cat. <laughs> Whatever. You can, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll come. We'll come. Top 1060, the half-life. It's coming in February sometime. We're, we're a few months away. Remind me again when we get closer. It's coming in February early next year. I, I'd, I'd tell you, but I'd, I w I'm not keeping a secret. I would tell you, but I just don't remember off the top of my head. All I remember is that it's coming uh, in the early in the new year. It is indeed quiet out there today, you know.
I wonder if this same company, the Oshibori Company, I wonder if they're going to get the contract for the new restaurant next door. We'll be seeing. Maybe they will be making. Maybe they're making deliveries right here. You know. Away they go. This is one wicked sharp blade now, you know. I had trouble with the tip there, but the blade itself, this is sharp, sharp, sharp. Ah, uh, yeah, it's the second Monday. First Monday, second Monday. First Monday. This is the, today is the garbage pickup for the, uh, as, you, as, as you can hear, it's the miscellaneous type stuff, the broken glass and uh, spray cans and funny stuff that can't be put in together with a normal garbage. I don't think we had any. I got it put out a while ago, so. It's always fun to see the garbage guys running down the street. <laughs> Whatever. They must be in pretty good shape. What am I missing? What am I missing? So the crepe shop is silent. I have no idea what's happening. They got almost finished. I mean, I, got, I have no idea what's happening inside. Well, they, they did. They moved in ovens and stuff like that quite a long time ago. Then the part we can see, they did a beautiful job. They've done a modern, very nice outside. 
And they came back day after day to touch it up and to put a bit of tiny plaster. They did some pinstriping with tape and stuff like that. They got it what looked like all ready. And then they wrapped up part of it in plastic so we couldn't see it. And I haven't seen them since then, weeks. So I have no idea. No idea, no idea. Permits? I don't know. I mean, before you, you know, you get your permits first, of course, you know, before you start doing stuff like that. You know. There's no, there's no construction permits. We didn't, we've never had a permit of any kind for this place here. They would have needed a permit from the health department because they're doing a food service. They're, they're, I guess they're making food there and selling it. So that's, that needs a permit and they would have needed that before they could have even started, to, before they could rent the place, they would need that. Or as part of renting it, they would, they would sort that out. So I don't know, I really don't know. Maybe it's the same as the, with the one next door here. They had a plan for time and schedule and they had a, you know, a good long-term plan. Work got done earlier, but the next people can't come in and start their job yet, like the construction here next door. Perhaps it's like that, I don't know. It seems to be finished, as far as we can tell. I'm not personally waiting for it. I, I wouldn't be eating there. Crepes are not my thing. Not street, street crepes are not my thing, so. Maybe we could, uh, you can you Google it? Uh, the thing, the sign outside, the sign that's painted on the wall says, Asaksa Crepes, as in C-R-E-P-E-S. That seems to be the name of the company that's painted on the wall there where you stand at the window and put your order in. So uh, have a Google. Have they got a website yet? Or are they announcing an opening? A Saksa Crepes.
<laughs> so the crepe company, they, well, they're on our website, are they? Is it a chain, then? Is it a chain store? No idea. <laughs> it's a franchise. Soka, soka. Yeah, no idea. Just have to wait until wait until they come up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, it's a franchise, but it's called Asaksa Crepes? Really? But how many locations are they planning? Round and around, round and around, you know. I mentioned the other few minutes ago, Taran san, the young carver, he's here training, you know, you know. He'll be looking at me doing this, you know, when he's watching sometimes, and he's probably thinking, you know, that Dave is turning the block too much, you know. Clearly, compared to the old guys, the best of the old guys, you know, I, I turn way too much. You know. Every time you turn the block, it's another one or two seconds that you're not carving. You know, and ideally, because of the you know the time is money aspect to this. This is a physical job trying to get work done. And because of the time is money. Turning your block like this, finding your location, getting your knife in, it all takes time and it adds up over the course of making a, making a print, you know. When we look at the old blocks, we can see a lot of it. You know, it's all carved without turning. You can tell from, from the angle, the angle of how the knife goes in. You know. All of my lines, basically, because I turn the block to the same angle to cut, all of my left angles, all of the leftover angles are pretty much the same, the angle you see me carving right now, kachunk. But people who don't turn the block, they move the knife instead of moving the block. And as a result, the angle of each cut is, is different. Some are shallower, some are steeper. And when you look at the finished block, you can see the difference that the guy didn't turn it, you know. And it's the same thing I mentioned before about the sharpening. I'm not about to try and change now. I'll be 70 next year, and let I me mean, give me a break, you know, to try and start. But if I were starting out again now from zero, I think I'd be very much interested in trying to do it 
their way, because clearly much more efficient. You know. So Taran San, Casey San, he's uh, he's I believe he's trying to follow Asuka San's way of doing it, the old way. You know, so. so both those young guys, Casey San and uh, uh, Chon San, the guy who's working here. They have the potential to become really, really far better carvers than I than I am. Absolutely. So things are looking good for the future for this for carving. You know. Printing at the moment, I'm not so sure because we have no structure here right now for training new printers and. Uh, it's something I really should pull to the, it's on the back burner right now, and I really should pull it forward. We have no structure for training printers here. And that's, that's going to come and bite us, you know, bite us in the ass, I think, if, if we don't get more people started. Okay, we're, oh, was that the last pine needle? Look at that, I didn't even realize. Looks like the pine needles are done. We should have had a ceremony. I didn't realize it was the last one. Let's have a peek where we are. So there's some more tree, we'll, do, we'll move on to the tree. This is parts of the tree here, but the pine needles, look at this, here we go. Chup, 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 chup. Has anybody been keeping track of how many hours it took me? I don't know. <laughs> All right, moving on, onto the branches next. I think what I'll do, I'll do the branch next, then the tree trunk, then the bird's legs. Oh no, we've got lots more down here. I have to think about that. There's a stuff, there's a zone down here I haven't even looked at. Lots, lots, lots to do. The pine needles are just the beginning of this, actually. So. Pine needles are done. We'll finish the tree, the, the tree branch here. Then I guess I'll do the tree trunk. The birds are going to be on a different block, but the birds' legs are going to be on this block because they are black with the needles and tree. But the birds themselves will be on a different block. And then we get all this stuff down the bottom. We've got some grasses and, uh, and some kind of embankment. 
So we're not out of the woods yet. Lots to go, lots to go. It's okay, this is January's print. There's actually no panic on this. It's January's print. It's got to go to the printer somewhere around halfway through November. So there are no panic on this whatsoever. I didn't keep track. How many hours did I work off camera? I'm sorry, I didn't keep track. There's no, you know, there's no requirement for me to do this. And the the work, other workers here, they do time sheets. We've got uh, their time. We don't we don't care about following their time, but it's a requirement from the you know any what's it called labor standards boards or something. When you're paying people for work by piecework rates, they are really worried that it doesn't meet minimum wage. Now, there's a legal minimum wage here. It's a joke. It's like, it varies around the country. In Tokyo, it's something like 980 yen or something, which is not even 10 bucks. It's bizarrely, bizarrely, bizarrely low. Of course, we're way over this when we pay our people. But because we pay piecework, Rechan will print 50 prints, 60 prints, 60 prints. I'll pay her, she'll get her X thousand dollars a month. Because we pay them piecework and because she works in this building, the Labor Standards Board, they really came to me some years back, you can't do this, this is not legally possible. Because they had no way to calculate how much she was earning per hour. It could have been a dollar an hour, they had no idea because there was no time clock and stuff. So they f first demanded that I stop paying piecework rates and that I pay either salary or time. And we didn't want to do that. We want to pay piecework. They get, it's not the same rate for each print. Some prints, they get 500 yen per piece. Some prints, they get 3,500 yen per piece. It varies depending on the difficulty of the work. But they have no way to measure that. They don't care. All they care is they want to make sure that person is getting more than minimum wage. So we compromised. And I said, OK, look, how about this? How about if we, if when they come in each day, they do the time sheet thing. They fill in the time, start, finish, start, finish, start, finish. So if you want to audit me, you can see how much they worked time-wise each month. And then you can compare how much I paid them, and you can do your calculations. And mm, 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 whatever, 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 whatever. That's the way we do it. So all of our workers who are working in the building here, not the ones who work at home, but the ones who work in the building, do actual timesheets to, to satisfy the requirements. And uh, so that's what somebody's saying here. So, so. 980 yen. It's nine, 900 and something, 976 yen or something. And out of Tokyo, it's cheaper. This is high here because it's so expensive to live in Tokyo. It's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. It's unconscionable. I mean, what's the over there paying now people in Amazon and Walmart? They're paying $15 or something. And here in Japan, the minimum wage is less than 10 bucks US. Just whatever. I don't want to talk about it. It's nothing to do with us because that's not how we pay people, but whatever. Hopefully the, the government and the structure of this country still, after all these years, is still all about the corporations. I get it. Back in the 1940s and 50s, the, company, the country was destroyed, so industrial policies were there to try and build an industrial Japan, build the, the Toyotas and Sonys and et cetera, et cetera. And they would hire people as full-time workers, cradle the grave, and everybody would be happy. And it worked. It worked fine, except for <clears throat> pollution. <clears throat> it worked fine economically through the 50s and 60s and 70s. And now, of course, it's come apart. Once Japan opened up and allowed outside com companies to come in and the markets opened up and allowed, you know, Japan had to fit an international situation, companies have to now get more efficient. And it's no longer about protecting the workers anymore. It's about protecting the, the, the corporations and the companies. And you now have a situation where all of these huge businesses, the, again, the Toyotas and Sonys as shorthand, they're sitting on mountains of cash, mountains of cash, but they're not paying enough. So consumer, consumerism here is destroyed because nobody has the free cash to spend on stuff. And the other main difference they've done is instead of hiring people now for lifetime employment, cradle to grave, huge numbers of people here are now on temporary contracts. They're part-time workers rather than full-time employees. So they can be dropped at a moment's notice. So the, the companies have all this flexibility and not enough people have regular jobs. It's an awful situation. 
And we're actually even, we're part of this actually ourselves. I have only three employees here now. Myself, Aoyama san, we are the owners of this place. And then Cameron is our only actual employee, as in contracted. Everybody else is a, is a temporary worker. They could be here today, gone tomorrow. And this is not because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to hire people. It's because we don't have the work for all those people at full-time level. So what we've done is rather than hiring two or three people full-time, we've hired 10 or 15 people to work one day a week, two days a week, three days a week. I'm speaking when I had the shop, you know, the people who are working in the shop. And the craftsmen, the printers and carvers, they're not part of that equation at all. They're independent people, actually. They're, they're self-employed people.
Are we over time? 8.58. I think Kinnison's going to come down from upstairs pretty soon. There's another held message here. Oh, a couple of them. Right, message approved. You're talking about Australian dollars. Why would that be held? <coughs> I'm missing all the conversation here. I'm sorry. It looks like there's questions that I should be answering, but I'm sorry. I can't see them all here. I can't sit and read all this right now. I'm sorry. It's it showing me, you know, I did, the message that was held is the one that says, I think that is Australian dollars, not US dollars. And now this thing is telling me, I've added a permitted term, that is Australian. You tell me, no idea. Karen, the comment about that thin line, you know, carving the thin line. The knife is in there, and it's moving along the line. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. You can see the wood on this side is being pushed up, and there's no stress on the wood on that side. It's the flat side of the knife on the line, and I am thinking, 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 feeling, push this way, push this way, push this way, but I'm not actually pushing but I'm sure thinking it, and the wood, this wood is compressed and out of the way, and the line gets left alone. Anyway, we're being disturbed here. I gotta put a mask on. Oh, guest here. This is Kirisam. She's come in to sit on the stream for a few minutes. I asked her this morning, she's coming to do flea market work, but I asked her to sit on the stream this, mo this morning because the show and tell today is too big. I want to show you some big prints. So Kirisan is going to become a cameraman, camera, camera, uh, camera operator, camera, whatever. <laughs> anyway, while she's here, sit down. Let me turn the turn the thing around. Say hello to the people and uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, can we do this without going offline? I think we're okay. You know, if, I, if I just turn the, sure, we're all plugged in. Uh, we maybe move some of that crap out of the way. Or it's going to fall. Whatever. Are you good to go? Uh, yes. Introduce yourself and... Uh, Hello, good morning. Konnichiwa. Uh, you were here a couple of weeks ago doing this, but this time around, feed me a little bit more of what goes on in the chat, because once I'm out of the loop, I can't... Uh, I can't uh... Last time I was here, a lot of it was like the same questions. Or That's okay, sure, sure, sure. Just a bit through, so let me just say, answer some bit out loud or something so that I know what's, uh, what's going on. So, so. Hello, good morning. Yeah. And Tommy, John Becker, Karen. This is... Oh, no, we just found a minute ago, there was a message that had stopped for, for offensive language or something. What this time? And, uh, and I look, looked at it and read it, and I allowed it. And you can probably see it. It's in the stream there. It, was, it mentioned the word, and the word, that was, the word that was false was the word Australian. Eh? Yeah, I know. Australian. Anyway, we can't muck around with it right now. I'll show you in the chat later. And it said it held because of the word Australian. And I approved it, so I have no idea what's going on. I mean, but, uh, Australian can pre be pretty vulgar, depending on... But the it word is. itself? I don't, is it not permitted in Twitch? I don't know. So, According to some conspiracy theorists, America, um, Australia doesn't actually exist. Everyone who says they live there are actors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Technically, it is spelled K-I-R-R-A, but when I'm in Japan, I mostly just use a single R, so K-I-R-A. No Australians allowed. I'm pretty sure I've written Australian on Twitch before and it hasn't been a problem. I don't know, maybe it was just related to something that came up before it, I don't know, but or something else in the sentence. But anyway, whatever, no big deal. Twitch is run by emus. <laughs> I don't recognize this name, I think. L L O U S E Dota has a question. Mm. Dave, are you still interested in making prints like those fabric books? Well, you mean the crepe paper books? Yeah. I would have to say I, I'm interested. I'd love to do that. But as far as having the resources to apply to a large project like that, 
it's not something we can even remotely think about at the moment. Building the tools and then the, the cost effectiveness books or prints made with that technology would be so labor intensive, so expensive. So it would be really cool, I think, as a special project. And when we were talking about this last year, the idea of a Kickstarter project, it would, it would be perfect for a Kickstarter yeah. project that it would be done, even if the book was going to be $400, whatever, do as a Kickstarter. But you see, I don't have a labor. Every single one of us carving and printing is busy, busy, busy now, just keeping our normal work running. You know? So the interest is there, yes, but that's all. I'm sorry, I don't have the resources. You know? That would be a great like retirement project for Dave, that once I was out of the normal flow here, once I wasn't required to be part of the normal carving and printing, I could do it as a personal project. That would be really cool. But, uh, but at the moment, with another subscription print starting up next year. We just don't have the labor. No. I, I cannot do this, you know. I can't carve with this mask. Can okay. I pull it down a little bit? Just I'm sorry. It's fogged all the lenses and... Why is there a lot of talk about haikus in poetry? They can explain that to you. <laughs> it was fun the other day, last week, when that was happening. What I was afraid of was that it would be something that would take over and every day would be a haiku day. But it seems like they're controlling themselves well. You know, so. A haiku day. So just somebody started it, and the other guys jumped in. And every second post in the stream for that day was, it was a, nominally a hike. And then somebody co co collated them later on and put them up on the website somewhere. Oh, nice. I'll have to have a look at them. On oh, the, the Acolytes website, so. I was trying to figure out the other day if I know any kid-friendly limericks. Because almost, I'm pretty sure every single limerick I know... Well, by definition, the show... ...can not be <laughs> taught to a child. So if any of oh the God, viewers don't. can make up a limerick... Don't, don't, get aside, don't start that one. <laughs> Those are more complicated to do off the cuff. The, the hike type stuff, people can do it you know, off the cuff, up and running, you know, but... Uh, I've noticed that most woodblock prints tend to be of smaller scale. Are big woodblock prints too impractical to make? And the, the prints we make here are, yes, they're smaller scale, and it's a question of resources. I know. When you start scaling up in size, things get expensive and they get difficult very, very, very quickly. And we are trying to run a workshop here where we can make a living at this, and our, our concept of making a living means we don't make small, uh, we don't make small runs of very expensive limited edition stuff. We want to make a lot of prints, keep them priced for like, what can I say, the common man to be able to buy, you know, whatever. We want to keep them not exclusive. And that means they've got to be affordable, and that means they have to be small. They've got to be uh, the resources, the paper cost, the printing cost, the carving cost. So the, in fact, the one we're doing now, the one I'm doing now, is actually a bit of a scale up for us. Most of our subscription prints up until now have been smaller than this. And it's simply a matter of, uh, of resources and dollars. You know. mm -hmm. Prints can be made very large, and every time this question comes up, we should have a bot answer for this. If you are on a browser, you can Google at the same time as you're doing this. Google for steamroller printmaking steamroller printmaking. And this is a really big deal in colleges in America. Every kid in the class gets a four by eight sheet of plywood, hack away at it. When you're ready, they all go outside with cans and cans of ink and a guy, they've rented a steamroller. 
and they put the four by eight sheets of plywood in the parking lot somewhere, roll on the ink, cover them with the paper. Okay, Jack, in you come, and the steamroller rolls no, over. Just flatten the wood. No, 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 no. You get, yeah, you get it all worked out. You get it worked out. Just if you, it's, it's a thing. If you Google steamroller printmaking or steamroller woodblock printmaking. It is a big deal, and everybody goes home with their print um, from a four by eight sheet of plywood. It's kind of rough work compared to what I'm doing here. If you roll a steamroller over this block, I would be, <laughs> I would be in trouble, but uh, it is a thing. Mike Lyon in Kansas City over there, a friend of mine, his, his sort of nominal print size is tatami, Japanese tatami size. That's the size for his woodblock print, which he prints, which he rubs by hand. Also, Yuasa-san here in the East Tokyo Printmaking Workshop, he makes prints about tatami size, four-color prints. But all of these people are making very few copies only, and they're trying to sell them for like a bajillion dollars each, which is a different concept from what we're trying to do. You know. Have you ever sold a retired woodblock? No, 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 no. For a couple of reasons. One is we don't have any yet. You know, we. we be because we're working at so few copies, I mean, our maximum so far is about uh, the Great Wave, which is pushing 2,000 copies, and it's nowhere near retirement. It's doing really, really, really well. So we don't have any retired blocks. Actually, it's funny you mention that, because you know, what I was working on yesterday upstairs, we are trying to refurbish. We're doing our very first block refurbishment here, an old set of blocks that has become worn out. It's the crane print in our catalog. There's a picture of a, you know, it's not there anymore, the crane in front of the sun, you know, the yes. one with the Karazuri body and then the red sun. The blocks are worn out too much to print and we're refurbing it. Which means, uh, I don't know, without me having me on, on the camera, I don't know if I can see, G gesture like this. The, 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 Lines on a wood block are, are, so they can see it, right? The lines carved on a wood block have a, 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 an angle going down yeah. each side. And when the wood block wears out, the top gets rounded. And it goes. Well, it just gets, it gets rounded like this. So, <clears throat> but what we're doing then is I've thrown the full set of blocks. I threw them through the planer and I took off. Make that gesture again. Oh, yeah. So if, 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 was originally, it was a sharp this, corner. And then it then they curved. And what I've done is I've planed off the top so one millimeter. Flat. So it's flat again, but yeah. it's now wider. And on top of those blocks, I am pasting the original design again. Okay. In fact, I don't know if it's working, if, if the explanation here is working. But a line that has become too rounded, plane it down, and because the, the angle is there, <clears throat> the line is now still there with a clean, sharp edge, but it's too wide paste the original design on top of that same place in the same registration marks, and then recut it. And just fix it up. Like just trim it, yep. Too thick. too thick, yes, exactly, exactly. And that's on my desk upstairs right now. If I click on a link here, will it ruin? Yes, yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. I've closed down the browser in the back to minimize uh, usage of the CPU, so we're running three cameras on a live feed and running a browser in the background seems sometimes to be too much for the system. So. Uh, my wrist, I broke it three times when I was a child and so it's a little, has problems sometimes and my four month old has decided that he likes jumping out of my arms, so it makes it kind of a problem to hold. Four month old, not four year old. You broke your wrist, is it beating up your brothers? No, I used to play rugby until I turned 14. And then when I turned 14, I got into professional wrestling until I was Professional 18. wrestling, what are we doing here? <laughs> Hello, Hello. Now you tell me. So I have quite a few random injuries and healed bones, but uh, 
nowhere near as bad as my sister who has completely shattered both of her legs at different points. So, okay, listen, keep me in touch with what's happening in the chat there. What's that all? Are they okay? Mm. They're taking care of themselves or what's that? The most mostly posting uh, emotes and uh -huh. making wrestling jokes. Dave was a professional wrestler too. Uh, his stage name was the Canadian Carver. Mm, so I have no complaints at all. I'm very, very happy with the with the with the community there. Wonderful, you know. And we still have no mods. You know, actually, a couple of the regular viewers have written to me you know, a few weeks ago because there was a little bit of drive-by. <coughs> we had some kind of whatever. There was a raid, and some of the people that drove by, and they were maybe young kids. They didn't see what was going on, so they made some funny comments. But it's very, very rare. And, uh, and usually, if you just ignore them, they just go away after a few minutes anyway. So, uh, you know. so no, I'm very happy, very happy. Yeah. Also, the numbers have stabilized. A while back, the, the numbers of people watching this this particular stream really started to grow quite uh, quite quickly, and I was worried that it might grow too much and, and lose the lose the personal touch. If the chat grows so far that it's just zooming by, you know, yeah. just you can't even watch what's going on, then it's pointless. There is no community anymore. It's just all drive-by. But uh, I'm very happy, you know. And it's fun. I, I, as the people here know, I, I don't have time to read it right now while it's going on. But every day at lunchtime, or every time there's a stream, at lunchtime I sit and read it, drink my coffee and read it. And, uh, 351 viewers. That seems about normal, yeah. So, so. Uh, John Becker says, show and tell time. Is it 9.15 already? Yeah. Okay, Kira-san, I need your help for this one because we have a big one today. So I can, let me turn the chat back here so I can see this, so I can see what's going on. Okay, one reason I asked Kira-san to come today was because I need some help with this thing. I know, let me post an auction link first. We talked about this, it was about two months ago when I got these objects. And then I told you I was going to show them the next day or something, and then I completely forgot about it. So here's the auction. Kira-san's already playing with the camera here. It's okay, no problem. You got your zoom on the top, do you? I know. Yeah, it's okay. Earthquake. She's going she's to move the camera back because these things are too big, too big, too big. So excuse me for the earthquake and the, and the, and the miscellaneous structure here today. <clears throat> if you've seen the auction link, they are two prints by the Takamizawa Company. Uh, actually, Kirsten, before you show me, can you turn the camera to show down the end of the wall there? The scroll. Can you zoom in on the scroll down there? In our shop here, oh, C6, C6, okay. That's a scroll print that I made, I don't even know, 20, 25 years ago. And the image is from, I don't even know who designed it, but the image is from a school of designers that are known as the Kaigetsudo School. And this was an era before woodblock printmaking was invented. There was some, before color printmaking was invented, there was some rough temple designs being made and some book illustrations started to get made. And then a group of people, the Kai gets at a school, they call them. Nobody's really quite sure who was what and who was the son of who and who was the apprentice of who. They designed a bunch of designs like this. They were mostly scroll paintings. And this is the 1690s, 1700, era. Dave loves his thick ladies. I love his thick, fat brush drawing, if that's what you're after. So anyway, the one you're looking at down there is a woodblock print I made 20 years ago or so in reproduction of a painting from that era. Okay, get us on. Zoom back. The Takamizawa Company also had a similar idea long before I had the idea. And they reproduced two of those paintings from that era. 
And they came up on that Yahoo auction a while ago. And how am I going to do this? These are big little items. I mean, they're, they're, here. Let's just pull them out one at a time. Here is one of them. These would have been published in 1970, give or take five years or so. Here we go. If I hold it still, Kirisan, you can do what you like with zooming and panning and whatever you want. So. Yeah. And the auction went a bit more expensive than I wanted to. It's 15,000 yen, you can see. So I paid, what is it, $150 or so for both of these. And they came in frames, which I immediately took out and threw away. And what we're seeing here, if you pause there for a sec, Kirisan, the white pigments here, these are white pigments that are printed on top. This is done in Kyoto style, imitation of a painting. So this is not really ukiyo-e type printing. The white you hear is not paper. The white you see is not paper. It's printed. OK, zoom on if you like. No, it's up to you, whatever. Zoom in. Or should I, should I move the print like this while you hold the camera? Look at this. And it's Takamizawa style. You can see right there. See that pattern, the reddish pattern we have here? It's done with gradation. It's printed twice, once in light color and once with a stronger color in the middle. And the physical body, somebody's already mentioning here. If you zoom out so we can see the whole thing, Kirisan, the other way. Look at the human proportions. Look at the size of her hand as opposed to the height of her body. There's rules, like your head is supposed to be one-sixth of a normal height. Your hand actually is big enough to cover your, your face, whatever. And these things, they just don't make it at all. If you try to imagine, what's the shape of that woman inside that bundle of clothing? I have no idea. But it was a style. It was a conceit. And they all have the same structure and the same shape. And this is the Takamizawa's pattern. And it was carved by Kikuta Kojiro-san. And it was printed by Sato-san. And this would be, again, oh, it's dated, 1979. It's actually dated, 1979. And we have the original price list, actually, from back in that time. And this was 60,000 yen. 60,000 yen. So this would be about $600. Yeah. So, so, so. Although back then, in the 1970s, the yen dollar was different. It would be about $300 at that time. But nowadays, it would be about so. Can I pull up the other one? It's so many things. So it's all about the kimono, too. The other thing, oh, look at this. Hold it there, Kirisan, hold it there. We've got metallic pigments here. Instead of the white that was on the last one, this one is gold. And actually, I think what they've done with this, if they've actually used gold leaf on this, a lot of times for the gold on these prints, we use on a bronze powder. But after 30, 40, 50 years, it goes green because it's bronze, like an old temple belt. And the fact that this is still shiny gold, after all these years, tells me that they've actually used gold leaf. This is not bronze. Zoom away, if you like. Too much bling, you know, too much bling. But that's what it was. That's what the original was. Bling, bling, bling. Yeah, it'll be gold leaf there. Look at the gradations. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere gradations. Oh, my god. This is done with, the one we're looking at here is done with gold leaf. There's lots of different ways to do it. You can print with gold flakes. You can mix gold dust with the pigment. This one is gold leaf. So they would have printed a layer of glue, put the gold leaf on top of it, and brushed away the part that didn't, uh, that didn't touch the glue. It's actually not so difficult. Whoa, we're getting up close there. 
Lots of detail, eh? Lots of detail. Look at those eyes. So, the other thing about these prints, you know, can we zoom out again a second, Kiss, and look at the whole thing overall? So, somebody's saying the lines are very heavy. That was the shtick. That was the thing. Thick, fat, rich brush lines. Thick, fat, rich brush lines. It's all about the singing line. But what we're looking at also is, in a sense, it's an advertisement. These ladies are, this is not your local housewife. These ladies are working ladies. They're in the Yoshiwara. And there's no name on this one. We don't know who it is. But the genre as a whole is advertising the, the life and the concept of, hey, visit the Yoshiwara and see some of these, uh, see some of these people. So why, why are we dealing with advertisements for prostitutes? You know, because, because they look beautiful. Can we catch both of them? I don't know. Where should I hold them? There we are, I forgot them both in the same place. So. And Takamizawa did these as a pair, and for the life of me, I don't know why they didn't have one left facing and one right facing. They published them as a pair, they sold them in frames as a pair, two frames side by side. Why on earth didn't they do them as left and right facing? Well, no, there are lots. I know in the genre, there are lots of these kaigetsu designs, uh, scrolls, and lots of them are left and, and right, you know, that they chose specifically. In fact, if you look at over there in the wall, the one I chose actually was too, was facing right. So maybe there are more facing right than left, I don't know. If I put it down here, can you then move in and zoom in and have a look? Move the camera in. Sure, if we get under the light here, we can see the texture. Hmm. And we see there's texture on the obi here. It's all done with embossed color on the side of the obi. There's also, if you hold it there, I'll move the paper. On the face, I don't know if you can see it, there's, there's texture. We've got a bit of a strange side light coming here now, but when you look at it from normal light, the, there's uh, there's uh, makeup under her eyes. And you can see that where the Baron has pressed. It, it looks a bit strange from this angle. And the blue gradations. I don't know how many blocks. Like this block and this block. This and this must be on different blocks because there's no way you could do this gradation if it was on the same block as that blue piece. <clears throat> so what we see is a single blue kimono. This piece and this piece and this piece are actually different wood blocks. You wouldn't be able to make this gradation if they were all on the same piece of wood. Looks like that's the reason for the line here. Well, the, is to split it so this is a gradation here. Well, the lines are the lines. The, the, the lines weren't drawn to make gradations or anything. The lines are the actual design work. But when you cut the color blocks, even though the, the, the original painting would have been painted in blue straight through these things, you can't print them from one block if you want a gradation here and not here. In other words, so this block has a gradation going down. This one has a gradation going sideways. And this one has a gradation going sideways at a bit of a different angle. And if the printer was really perfect, the color here would match perfectly. But he wasn't. Close enough. But, uh. Is that a mark on her cheek? It's foxing. There is foxing has started on this. And I, we've stopped it now. We've got this thing out of its frame and out into the open air where it can get some uh, breathing. But yes, it is foxing now. So there's a bit of a different tint on the blue here. In a perfect world, this would have been the same color but give me a break. The guys did a very, very, very good job here. The blue here too, it's a little bit too dark there, I think. Also, they've put gradations inside these things. You know, all the, all the chrysanthemums have gradations going around, you know. It's just so over the top. Absolutely so over the top, you know. 
Also, her face is printed as well, you know. I don't know if you can see it here. The, her collar looks to be the original paper color. And her face is printed with a white gofun, a white powder pigment, to give it the, the feeling of that white makeup. Yeah, so I'm saying a lot of work went into this. You bet you, a lot of work, a lot of work. I'm very happy to get these. I know, as I said, I paid a bit more than I wanted to, but uh, can't be helped, can't be helped. They'll go into our collection. A little tiny bit of misregistration too on the eye, I think here, you know? You can see there's a double line on the eye. It's a tiny bit misregistered. Someone's asking what? We can see the overlapping color zones and key lines because the key lines are printed lightly. There's a bunch of different lines here. So the, the first key line is printed extremely lightly, like her face and her nose. And there's some under here as well. So yes, you can see the overlapping. And then on top of that comes these thick, rich black lines, which are not a key block. And they're even done in a bunch of different colors. Look at this, we have a blue. So you get a gray key line, then a blue, and then a black. Oh, there's more at the bottom. So Kittasan's pointing out down at the bottom here. There's even more. Some of these lines are done in a silver gray. And here's your overlap. You can see it here now. There's your overlap. See the double line here. This is the gray outline going underneath the outside background tone. I'm very happy with this, very glad to get these. I didn't look at these so closely yet. Here's I mentioned before, the pattern is done twice. Faint color, gradation in the middle, and then white lines on top of it. Someone's saying, when you watch it, 160p, there's no misregistration. <laughs> That's like we tell people with all of our prints. Here's a new print. Here, take your glasses off and squint and look at it from 100 feet away. It looks really nice. <laughs> okay, zoom up, ma'am, show me the whole thing here. All right, I think we're good to go on this. These will, these will be photographed and they'll be on the website, but it won't be happening tomorrow. It'll be happening when we get to it. Okay, there we are. Monday morning, we'll be back here now. It's our three-day break. We do two, two, two. It'll, we'll be back here Thursday morning. I sh I'm supposed to be messed up here, Kittasan, sorry. sorry. We'll be back again Thursday morning. I'll be continuing work on that key block and we'll have some other kind of show and tell, something a bit more practical to show next week. So thanks very much for watching. I'll read the chat again at lunchtime when I'm having my coffee and enjoy the conversation at that time. Thanks to yourself for helping. Thank you very much. Okay. See you guys. See you on Thursday. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Beautiful show. Beautiful. Well, when, when I made mine though, it was like it was 2004 or 2006 or something. It took me a year and a half. A year and a half it took me to do all the blocks. It's like 96 impressions, mm -hmm. the one I did. That kimono has a lot of more different colors, though. Well, I don't know. It's the same kind of stuff. Mine's a bit bigger than these. And I made 100 copies, mounted as a scroll, mm -hmm. and it was a year and a half's work. These guys probably blew this out in a few weeks. I don't know. We're still live here. Let's get off. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. See you later.